All right, welcome back to the Narrowband channel. So today we're gonna to be unboxing a new scope. I'm gonna give you my first thoughts of it, but also we're gonna set it up on the mount behind me. And in case you haven't noticed, it's got some counterweights on it. That's because this is a big scope. I must have cut it on the other side. <laughs> So this is like the first SV Boney that's out in the wild. And it looks like this is not official like, you know, production packaging. Well, it's the first SV Boney of this type. Okay, and there it is. It's the big 122 millimeter triplet. It's definitely big. <laughs> well, I kind of don't know what to say, actually. All right, so it's got the same... Actually, these knobs are a little bit different than the ones that are found on the 80 millimeter. There are a lot of options for spacing, it looks like. That's not quite as smooth as some of the other ones are, but you know, well, again, this is, this is really a prototype scope. There we go, there she is fully extended. Let's show you the, the front end. If you can see in there, it is clean. I do know in fact that this has been like used a few times by other people, mainly to like demonstrate it and so forth, because this is, this is the prototype one. And this is gonna get to go to a couple of other people. I, I've already told that Bunny that I wanna buy it. <laughs> so, there it is outside of the rings and the, the rings are actually, there's been a lot of thoughts gone into these. I mean, there are a lot of different attachment points all over the tops. The bottom parts, of course, don't really have too many attachment points, but that's fine. I'm sure if you wanted to put this on an actual Lost Mini type rail, which a scope like this actually almost deserves a Lost Mini rail. A Vixen rail is adequate, but kind of close to the edge. And... That might be actually feedback I give to SV Boney. We'll see here. All right, now, now this is the way the rings came for me. We'll see if they actually come in this type of configuration when the actual production variants are out there. But typically, you want your rings as far apart as you can get them because then they kind of have the most leverage in the scope, so to speak. And you'll want to do that, of course, with the dew shield all the way retracted. Right now it's completely retracted because you, you want to be able to pack the thing up with the rings on there, suppose, probably. So let's, uh, let's move these. And, and also you're gonna to need to keep in mind where it's going to balance on your actual mount. Now for me, I'm using a harmonic drive mount with this guy. So balance for me actually isn't going to matter as much. I mean, we're gonna to try to eyeball it up. Obviously you wouldn't wanna have it like look like it's way out of balance, but we're gonna at least try to get it close. Now these, you don't need to tighten these like super hard just yet. You wanna get it on the tube first. That way when you put the clamps down, you can tighten them down and they'll self align themselves and then you tighten, tighten onto the Vixen rail. So let's do that. I'm just gonna kind of snug them down. You don't have to crank these down super hard because they're on felt. And then I'm gonna try and move them back and forth just like that so they kind of settle. And we'll flip it over. And now we'll actually tighten these down good and hard. So this is a harmonic mount. We can't really unlock any of the axes on it and then just like balance it. What we would do is we would put on our camera or eyepieces and 
basically everything that's going to go on the tube itself. And then you're gonna to try to find the balance point, which for this guy is actually all the way up here. And that's because there's a lot of weight in the optical glass of this. And, you, and I'll, I'll, I probably should extend the dew shield too. So as you can see, it's tilting forward because it's heavy. And I'm not gonna put it that far forward because I know I'm gonna put a camera in the back. But that's kind of how you get a rough balance with one of these things if you're using a harmonic mount like I am. Cable management is something that should take you hours to do. I hope you don't spend 15 minutes throwing your rig together. That's a recipe for disaster. Why? Well, there's a lot of, th there's a lot of things you need to keep in mind in cable management. One of them, obviously, is that your stuff's connected, but the other one is like also just keeping the weight off of your cables because the connectors of your gear, they're kind of fragile. And if you break them, like for example, if you broke a USB plug on your ASI Air, well, guess what? The whole thing's no good. So for this reason, I actually go through a lot of, I spend a lot of time, let's put it that way, finding cables that are the exact length that they need to be, rather than using cables that are too long and just kind of like coiling them around of my equipment like I see so many other people doing. Now, I am getting a focal reducer field flattener for this. Maybe both, I'm not sure. Uh, Cindy wasn't quite totally clear. But that I will hopefully have in time for Cherry Springs, which is in like four days. Some of the things that I like for cable management, one, zip ties are pretty handy. I prefer white. And the reason for white is so that you can see them in the dark. Uh, and then there's this stuff here. This is like cable wrap. It's like a twist type stuff. You can see I already got it on here. And I really like this stuff because it allows me to wrap a large variety and uh, a large am amount of different types of cables. So it doesn't really matter if I have five cables that I'm trying to wrap together or just two. It'll, it'll kind of work with all of them. Now, this is not the first 120 millimeter refractor I've ever used. Uh, oh, this is 122. It is the biggest refractor I've ever used. In the past, I have used this guy right here, which as you can see, he's quite a bit smaller. But uh, this is a 120 millimeter acro. It's a doublet. It doesn't have any ED glass in it. There may be some ED glass in the focal reducer that I use for it. It's this Skywatcher 80 millimeter ED focal reducer. And this guy is fast. This is F4.3. I use this strictly with narrow band imaging. And in order to get one of these things that works, the chromatic aberrations in these things are pretty bad. You need very tight narrow band filters to kind of minimize those chromatic aberrations. But yeah, this is, this is what I've used in the past. Shorter focal length, obviously. I think that was a 522 millimeter focal length. This guy is 800 something unreduced. And with the focal reducer, it's, I think it's gonna be like 600 something. So now without the focal reducer, I'm guessing that focus is gonna be kind of out here somewhere. So let's take it off here again and we'll see where it balances. Yeah, about right there. All right, so let's turn this around so you can kind of see what's going on here. I've got power and the USB control from the mount going up into the ASI Air. Now, I know a lot of you have been asking me, okay, how are you getting an ASI Air to work with a blue camera? I will do a video about this eventually, okay? I'm not running the ASI Air software on here. I'm running something different. But I, I wanna know enough about this stuff to really talk authoritatively about it when I actually do do a video about it. So I will eventually, but you know, anyways. So yeah, basically we are actually all set to go because this will power the camera, we can control it, and we can control the mount. I just need a guide camera and a guide scope, which those are in the mail and they're on their way. Uh, one last little thing here about cable management, something you want to pay attention to. So anytime you've got a pivot point or a point where the scope is going to move, you want your wires to have plenty of slack there so that if this thing turns in either direction, it's not gonna snag and yank one of these things out. Cause like I said, if you 
break a port on something, it means the mouse got to go back or your ASI Air's got to go back for repairs. And you really don't want to go through that. And as you can see here, I've actually kind of set it up such that it kind of sticks out from the mount and that's hopefully to keep it from snagging on any of these things.